Hey guys, welcome back. You know the hard part? The hard part is pushing the start record button and like, okay, here we go, we're doing this. Anyway, I just got super excited and looked through my bookshelf and it took me a bit to figure out what book to do next. We have a winner, book number two, featured here with me, I'm Alicia Eichmann, on this show that is not yet named, comment below if you have a suggestion. Or if you have questions, comments, feel free, comment below. I will answer all of them. Uh, Margin by Richard Swanson. This is a book that I discovered last year, and it sticks out as one of the top books that I would recommend that everyone get and read. Buy it, get it from the library, read this book. I loved it. Uh, without further ado, I want to share with you the definition of margin. Okay, I think this, along with a few other topics I'll get into, are one of a few key topics that can really help us in today's world, how to thrive and not just survive, how to find the life that we want to live, the meaning that we're looking for, uh, how to make decisions, how to spend our time, how to prioritize, how to... Okay, one of my biggest things is how do we use technology that is so powerful and such a gift, but not lose that which it could push out of our lives if we aren't intentional and know how to use technology and how to use progress and benefit from progress without <laughs> suffering the pain of progress. He talks about that quite a bit in this book. I love his definition of margin, so I'm going to read this for you. Okay, his definition is power minus load. So we're going to unpack this. Power is made up of factors such as energy, skills, time, training, emotional and physical strength, faith, finances, and social supports. Okay, so resources. So you sleep, you get energy, you talk to friends, you get energy, you have time, you have money, you have people to help you you have your faith, things like that. Everything that fills up our tank, he uses the word power. Okay, load is made up of factors such as work, problems, obligations and commitments, expectations, both internal and external, debt, deadlines, and interpersonal conflicts. Okay, so things that drain us, uh, even when they're productive, potentially. So work, problems, our own expectations for ourselves, other people's expectations for us, right? Debt, having a deadline, uh, interpersonal conflict when somebody's upset with you or if you think that they might be or if you feel awkward about something that you said, it grates on you, it drains your energy, right? So power, load. Um, and he says... When our load is greater than power, we enter into negative margin status, we are overloaded. When power is greater than load, we have margin. Okay, load is greater than power, we're overloaded, we're overwhelmed. What is overwhelm? There you go, that's a definition of overwhelm. When we all talk about being busy, too busy, overwhelmed, overloaded, how do you thrive and not just survive? We're talking about overwhelm so much in today's, today's society, I love his definition there, and the opposite the opposite of overload is margin. So this is a concept I started working on integrating, you know, trying to apply to my own life last year. And I did a couple things. I, last, going into this past fall, I cut everything out of my schedule. We didn't put my oldest back into... Uh, baseball, we skipped the season. I didn't go back to Mops, which I love. Mothers of Preschoolers, highly recommend that organization. It's amazing. I needed space. I needed the Friday morning. I still had to work. I cut out everything that wasn't working family. Um, I had a one-year-old, and so I've got four boys, right? If you, I have four boys. Almost eight, six, three, and one. Three-year-olds potty training. Uh, the, older two, the older two are in school. So I was adding a fourth kid, still adjusting to that, felt overwhelmed over the summer, struggling with a little bit of mommy depression, trying not to really sink into it. This, I, I posted on my, I kind of blogged last summer, I posted about this book, you can read the 
uh, the post some similar things to what I'll say, a little bit different. But something I, I say there is just that this book really helped helped me in several ways and helped, you know, pull me out of that at that point in my journey. And, okay, so back to margin, something I said in that blog post, which got it on the monitor there, I was referencing it, right? So I've, I've got like my, anyways, I'll link it below. Um, speaking about moms for a minute, as moms, this is why your capacity grows and now I can handle four kids and eight years ago, I was not ready for that. Now, some people adopt, foster kid, people, some people have special grace, whatever. Natural order of things, add one kid at a time, your capacity grows, right? So I didn't know how to have one kid. I had one kid, figured that out. I was good, knew what I was doing, had a second kid, didn't know what I was doing anymore, right? Second, third, had three kids, good, had figured it out, gotten a rhythm, had, probably had some margin in my life, had a fourth kid, have to figure this out again. Every time you have a baby, that adds a huge, huge piece to your life that just takes a lot of your time and energy, right? And I do recommend if you're having a baby, cut some stuff out of your life to make room for that new thing. Same thing if you have a new job, if you have a new serious relationship, if you move to a new place, anything that's big, a transition that involves a lot of decision making or emotional energy, um, you know, personal crisis, potentially, uh, a family emergency. If you have different things like that, learn to be self-aware and pay attention and see if your power is being lowered and your load is being increased. If you're self-aware and you understand these concepts, I, at least I found for me, and I believe for you too, this can be amazing as far as just, for one thing, it gives us a vocabulary to talk about it together, and it also gives us a way to look at our lives ourselves and say, even though, for example, baseball, we just signed it back up for the spring, but we didn't succumb to guilt over skipping a season. We just, it was what I needed. And so we were cool with it. And we tried to do family camping instead as a trade-off um, to still get that outdoor outlet and for, you know, a husband to have something to look forward to. So for margin, I'm amazed at how that helps me understand why my capacity is greater sometimes and lower other times. And that helps me to figure out what I need. Now, there's nothing like overload and also sleep deprivation to take you to a negative, difficult, discouraged place. And it's amazing. There's nothing like margin and space in your life to help you. And reading this book, read this book, get it from the library. I don't care. Maybe I'll figure out an affiliate link. You could support me if, if I figure out one. I'll put it down there. Um, I'll at least link to the blog where it's there. But read this book or just take this concept. Maybe listen to this video. And if you got enough from this video and you don't need to read further, go for it. If you have a question, put it below and I'll, I'll answer it. Um, I can also give you a few more nuggets from the book. Um... Okay, interesting. He says something about progress. Uh, I'll be talking about this because I've read a couple of other books. Um, the Paradox of Choice and the Progress Paradox were two that I've written. They were interesting. Uh, I'm going to write books eventually that I read. Uh, they were interesting that we'll get to. But he says, of our five environments, most of our progress has come in the physical world and the cognitive world. So physical, physical environment wealth, technology, health, the material world, and then cognitive environment, knowledge, information, education, the intellectual world, right? Okay, so we're so blessed physically. We have more time-saving devices, um, home cleaning, saving, whatever you call those, you know, all, all those appliances. And then the amount of information that we have, especially with the internet, we have so much information and we have so much potential material wealth at our fingertips, just being in America and living in the 21st century. And then he says most of our pain is in the social environment, the emotional environment, and the spiritual environment. And I will get into this, but I'm amazed, I was amazed, still amazed, several different books that I read this summer. Okay, another one that we'll get to, um, Irresistible, Irresist Irresistible, about uh, technology. <laughs> I could 
spoiler alert, I'll tell you that this is also the point of this, the biggest thing that I got out of that book too. Several of these books, the biggest thing that I got out of it is that relationships is like the antidote. It's like the magic bullet. Like there is a silver bullet, it's relationships. Um, and he kind of, he kind of gets to that and says that at the end of this book, um, just that, and that, that's part of the key of balancing technology with, and progress with what really matters in life is just that relationships matter. And so if you keep relationships first, you keep people first, you care about people, and then the money will come, you'll figure out how to spend your time, you'll figure out how to use technology, but if you start with people and relationships and keep that first, family first, you know, your faith, your family, your friends, start with that, uh, clear your calendar, put in the relationships that you need to thrive, and then fill in everything else around that. All these books, that's what it's been um, pointing me to. Which, funny thing about that, it was really hard to not go to Mops, but I'm at a point where my kids are older, I've talked to a couple friends about this, and I'm just really feeling like I've outgrown Mops, and that, that needs to be okay, and I need to just let it go, and I can still keep in touch with those friends, and I just need to make room for something else in my life. Which, another fun thing from this book, was just the idea of being available, which also makes me think of a book I'm going to talk about. I'm going to have to watch this video and then look at, see what all the things are that I said I was going to talk about next. Anyways, Tony Robbins talks about, he had some fancy word for it, our vocabulary. And I did an exercise in his book and he said to write down, <laughs> this video is already longer than I wanted. Okay, sorry. I love you guys. I keep thinking of cool things to tell you about this. Okay, so he had this exercise where he was like, put down a bunch of non-resourceful, non-helpful, <laughs> non-constructive words that you use. And then he's like, now find a way to reframe it. And one of the big ones for me is that I've been feeling lonely and my, my new vocabulary word for that is available. And so when I was just skimming through this book, one of his tips of ways to look at it or benefits of finding margin is that you become more available to God, to your friends, to your family, to a stranger that you meet on the street or at the store checking out with groceries, whatever it is, when you slow down and you, you can live in a different mental state like Tony Robbins talks about, you can be available for the relationships, which is what it turns out is the antidote for everything. It's the antidote for progress. It's the answer to to everything, to a, to a certain extent, in a certain way. All right. So I want to wrap up this video. I'm just gonna say he talks about margin in, to give you an idea if you wanna read the rest of the book, uh, emotional energy, physical energy, time, and finances. He has a chapter about each of those and he gives very specific paragraph, you know, for each item, bulleted list of really great tips. I found myself, highlighting and earmarking and underlining uh, and putting it on my, my list of books to come back to, to revisit. He just has a really good list of tips and some of it is like stuff that you know, but it's such a, I got it, I, I'm, I love having it in paper copy because he's just got these great list of things that you should do. Like I wanna come back and put check marks. All right, without further ado, that is all for this episode. If you have a question about anything, please put it below. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.